audit announcement has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Hello everyone and welcome to the WZWA Network and welcome to my review show here of NXT Deadline from December 9th, 2023 from the Total Mortgage Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, here we go, man. The last WWE PLE of the year for NXT. Uh, and it was a hell of a show. Let's start off with the kickoff show here, okay? I honestly cannot stand how they do a pre-show or a, a kickoff show about fake wrestling. They have a panel of people analyzing something that isn't actually real. It just seems forced. We could have a couple of matches, you know. They spent 40 minutes faffing about talking about all these matches when we could have had a NXT tag title defense. Perhaps Thea Hale and JC Jane have a tag match against Lola Vice and Electra Lopez. Something interesting. Nothing against Megan Morant and Sam Roberts and the other guy from the, the bump, but I've never been a big fan of it. And and at least it look at least the NXT kickoff has at least one match, right? It's a singles match with Axiom and Nathan Fraser. As we know, these two had a conversation backstage two weeks ago where Nathan was giving one of his hard hitting home truths about Baron Corbin and Ilya Dragunov, where his big dumb mouth got him in trouble with Ilya. Uh, Ilya was behind him, and Nathan blamed Axiom for not giving him the heads up about that. And that led to a match last week on NXT, which got interrupted by the women brawling from the Iron Survivor Challenge. Uh, so uh, the rematch has been booked right here, right now, for uh, Deadline's kickoff. I, you know, one thing, I do not know what they're trying to achieve with Axiom's entrance, but that's cool. That's cool. I just, I don't get it. Um, it was a typical stalemate to start off between the two. Uh, Vic Joseph, he questioned Nathan Fraser having a bit of an attitude lately. But it's not an attitude problem he's got. It's a personality problem, Vic. He's got a big mouth and he's annoying. He's not misunderstood. He's just got foot and mouth disease. His problem is that he needs to shut up. That's that's exactly what's going to happen, Vic. The match wasn't so bad. Uh, Nathan is definitely slowly turning heel, as you could tell when he couldn't put Axiom away. He was getting frustrated and treating him like shit. Um, if they had a cruiserweight title still, man, these two would have a real spot on this roster. Unfortunately, they got rid of that thing. And it feels like in pro wrestling, uh, there's no different weight divisions. There is a little bit in MLW, but there's no weight divisions where you know, cru cruiserweight wrestling is not being represented. X division could be considered that, but it's about no limits, not weight limits. Anyway, I think Axiom could have won with that Spanish fly off the top instead of having to kick uh, hit a kick to the head afterward, which he calls the golden ratio. Uh, the Spanish fly off the top is a finish, bro. But anyway, at least Axiom won. He wins in 10 minutes and 49 seconds. Nowhere, no, no idea where this goes from here, excuse me. It's like, 1.30 in the morning. Shawn Michaels opens the show. Dun, 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 dun. He's the king. I know I'm sexy. Come on. That's, uh, everyone gets into that shit. Um, I would love for Shawn to correct that wrong from Saudi Arabia. You know the match I mean. I know he probably can't do it now, but imagine he came back for one last match for WrestleMania 40. Come on. Turn AJ Styles heel. Get AJ versus Shawn Michaels. You know AJ can pull the best out of the old Shawn. And Shawn needs to have a better final match than what he had. Anyway, CM Punk makes an entrance as Shawn is in the ring. They goof off together. Apparently they forgot what they were supposed to say. Uh, Punk mucks around and kids that he says that he will sign with NXT. We know that's not going to happen. Uh, the segment kind of was a bit awkward, but I think they actually forgot the, what they were supposed to say. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the first match of the pay-per-view. Uh, Dominic Mysterio defending the NXT North American title. Uh, Rhea Ripley was not at ringside, which is what Cage Match said. 
So I'll delete that, even though I've already sent through my written review to Norman at realprowrestling.com. He takes on Dragon Lee with Rey Mysterio at ringside, but he uh, Rey ends up being on commentary. So as we know, some months ago, Dominic became the North American champion, beating Wes Lee in a very random occurrence. Uh, the likes of Wes, Mustafa Ali, Trick Williams, Dragon Lee all went after Dominic in that title. Uh, they were building to a big match with Dragon Lee and Dominic, but then suddenly Dragon Lee got brought to the main roster and their feud never concluded, which I complained about. Um, Wesley returned from hiatus to challenge Dominic again after he beat Cameron Grimes, Bronson Reed and Johnny Gargano in a four-way match two weeks ago, but then he announced last week that he needed back surgery and he would be out for over a year as he was standing in the ring with a crutch, and I feel very bad for him. Uh, Rey Mysterio then popped on the screen and announced Dragon Lee would be coming back to NXT to face Dominic at last for the North American Championship. So at least we get to tie off an old story that I complained about that um, was not tied off because I like things being tied off. So <clears throat> I'm sensing we're getting a new champion here and Dragon Lee will be winning his first championship under the WWE banner. I guess his brother Roosh was right to stay in AEW and uh, be lost in the shuffle there with his tag partner, Drillistico, where they got a tag title shot on pay-per-view after having one match as a tag team. That makes sense. Um, but here's Dragon Lee, uh, just wrestled on Survivor Series against Santos Escobar and now against Dom here on this PLE. Oh. Oh. Some people make a good decision, some don't. Happy to hear Ray on guest commentary too. Dragon Lee straight away impresses with his high-flying ability. He's surely going to be the next Ray Mysterio. Jesus Christ, early on, Dragon Lee copped it sweet off that top rope when Dom interrupted him. And then that DDT off the ring apron by Dom was super dangerous and it looked like Dragon Lee's mouth was bleeding. Booker T, totally siding with Dominic through this match, badgering Ray on commentary. That's hilarious, man. I did not expect that. Uh, Vic was incredulous over Booker T's bullshit. Uh, I wonder if this will all lead to Dragon and Ray, maybe against Dom and Santos at WrestleMania, hair versus mask. Santos has a great head of hair. Dom has a great head of hair. No way Dragon Lee's losing his mask, but I don't know. It throws things up in the air a little bit. You know, imagine seeing Dom get his hair shaved at WrestleMania, 40 at least. You know, that would be huge. Um, Dragon Lee stomped Dom to the outside off the top rope onto the ring apron. Uh, he had a lot of momentum, but Dom hit this amazing drop kick at one stage. And you know what? Dom's selling. He's really on point with that. A lot of suspense for this, but um, Dragon hit this huge Liger bomb and then some sort of specky move after that for the win. And he became the new North American champion in 10 minutes, for, uh, 34 seconds. So there you go. I don't think this is going to continue on. Anyway, we see Ilya arrived uh, to the building with Baron, um, also arriving to the building. E for effort. I like that. Uh, coming up next. Oh, God, this is going to be, this is going to be a long one, isn't it? Fuck. Fuck with 1.39 in the morning. Uh, women's title, number one contendership, Iron Survivor Challenge match, Blair Davenport, Fallon Henley, Tiffany Stratton, Lash Legend, Kalani Jordan. So as we know, whoever wins this gets the shot at Lyra Valkyria at... New Year's Evil. So I'm going to try and skim through this massive amount of notes that I've got. Uh, we know that this match is pretty much a mix between an Iron Man match and a King of the Mountain match. I like the concept, though. It's good to see something different. Fallon was out first. Blair Davenport was out second. Blair dominated Fallon early. Um, and, you know, that, that first five minutes kind of, you know, you just wait. And then here comes Tiffany Stratton. Oh, boy, my girl. My girl, my girl, talking about my girl, my girl, ooh, I got Tiffy. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? And I typed that sentence before she made her entrance. I knew that Tiffy was going to be third. Um, all you can hear is Tiffany's annoying yet beautiful voice talking trash the whole time as the heat on Fallon is taking place with Blair taking uh, place with Tiffy. They, they're both working together to beat down on Fallon. Um, <clears throat> what a what a move in this match. This this is probably this is match of the show. Actually, let's be honest. Uh, Tiffany did a cartwheel into picking up Fallon into an Alabama slam. And did you see that? She did a cartwheel and mid cartwheel, she's picking her up for an Alabama slam. I'm like, how did you even think of that? 
Uh, Blair took advantage, though, and pinned Fallon for the first point. Kalani Jordan was in next, my rookie of the year, as we'll find out in my end of year awards. Just gave away a spoiler there. Uh, <clears throat> Kalani impressed, but um, you know what? I'm telling you, you have Kalani, you don't need Naomi, you don't need Trinity back. I'm sorry. After watching Trinity wrestle in Impact Wrestling in the last six months, she's just. I don't know. I don't know. It's taken her a long time to get herself back into the swing of things, but you got Kalani. You don't need Naomi, unfortunately. I don't know. I'm surprised that I'm saying that because I was always, I was always a big fan of Naomi. Anyway, uh, Fallon left the pen penalty box and went after Tiffy, and then she hit a shining wizard and she got a point. So she got a win back after losing to Tiffany a few weeks ago. Last Legend was in next and she gets involved straight away and ruins a potential Tower of Doom. Then she hit a double suplex on Fallon and Kalahi, then choke slam Stratton, then choke power bond Fallon and pinned both Tiffy and Fallon to get two points. Two fucking points, love. Lash has really improved over the last few months, I'm telling you. Kalani hit this insane Asai moonsault to the outside onto Lash, but then she slammed back first just to the announce table and it was nuts. Metaphor, Oromensa, uh, Noam Dar, uh, Jakara Jackson, they all come out and they try to block the penalty box from opening, uh, which leads to Fallon trying to climb out the roof of the penalty box and Tiffany knocked her off the top of it because there was no roof to it and Fallon went through the announce table. <laughs> <laughs> then Tiffany did a somersault plancher off the top of that uh, penalty box onto the remaining ladies in the match, and they all went down. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Blair then laid Kalani out to get a second point of this is an awesome chant broke out, which was actually warranted, unlike the uh, Nathan Fraser Axion match. It didn't warrant it, bro. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay uh tippy hits the prettiest moonsault ever on lash it, it was amazing uh and then kalani hit a 450 splash as well uh so tiffany's now got her first point kalani gets german suplex off the tote rope by blair blair finn fallon and got her third point and then as it was coming towards an end uh lash legend had just got out of the penalty box she was chasing after blair davenport Blair just kept running off and then the time ran out and Blair won three points uh, to two for Lash Legend, one for Tiffy, one for Kalani, and I think one for Fallon. Um, but there you go. So Blair Davenport wins this matchup and she will see Lyra Valkyria at New Year's Evil. Lyra came out with her hair down, which is very appreciated. Then Cora Jade, of all people, attacked Lyra from behind, grabbed the belt, held it up, and I'm like, what is going on here? Blair's going to be dealing with Nikita Vines. Cora Jade's come back. She's attacked Lyra Valkyria. What's going to happen for New Year's Evil? It would be a bit unfair, though, to be honest, if Blair ended up being in a multi-woman's match for the title at that show because um, she just had to qualify to get into the Iron Survivor Challenge. So if Cora and Nikita are involved, uh, I don't know, maybe Cora and Nikita need to have a match with themselves and um, keep away from this title match between Lyra and uh, Blair Davenport. Uh, so we'll see. It's going to be interesting having them both in the mix. Blair Davenport, of course, wins in 25 minutes. Carmella and Trick are both seen getting ready next, and they're both locked in, apparently. Trick is still suspicious of Mello and his antics with Lexus King. Speaking of which, the next match is Carmelo Hayes versus Lexus King. Lexus has been meddling with Carmelo and Trick Williams' affairs over the last few weeks, and it was revealed that Lexus could have been the one to attack Trick Williams that initially cost him that shot at being NXT champion, number one contender for Halloween Havoc, I believe. Um, it was then revealed through CCTV footage that King may be in coots with Carmelo Hayes. Uh, Carmelo challenged King to this match to prove to Trick he isn't lying about being involved in the attack. So that makes sense. So I thought it would be interesting. It was a very slow burn for this story with Hayes and Trick and Lexus getting involved has been a very nice added element. Lexus already has already, excuse me, done more in NXT in a couple of months than the whole time in AEW. This is a guy Lexus needs to work with to really get into the mix. 
Uh, Carmelo Koala got out of the gate very aggressive. Uh, King dominated early, though, after that. Um, he, sorry, he was dominated early after that and had to come up with a game plan to get into Melo's head because this is what his character is about. It's about the mind games. It's about the bullshit. He's like, he's his father's son. Eventually, he's going to realize it, and that's when the, uh, the baby face turn comes. Anyway, King ends up in control, and you know what? I don't care about the name change. Brian Pillman Jr., eh, Lexus King's fucking sick, dude. I'm down with it. Oh, if, if what I'm hearing is true, oh, poor Walter. Mm. Uh, longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, uh, fit as fuck, and look at you. You look like an old man over there in AEW. Sorry, bro. I like Keith Lee, but shut up. Um, <laughs> the, the top turnbuckle pad fell off at some stage, and I think it was not by design because it was not utilized in this match. They both tumbled off the top rope at one stage to the outside, which was really tough. This was exactly what Brian Pillman Jr. needed in AEW. But they didn't have the infrastructure there behind the scenes to make the matches as good as they could be. That's why his match at Arthur Ashe Stadium with MJF was not very good. Um, too many people on the roster for him to get anything decent. They did nothing. They ended up looking like bitches when uh, Julia Hart left them for the House of Black. They didn't do anything about it. I don't know. Anyway, nothing but net by Hayes, and he got the win. So Hayes picked up. I thought I thought Lexus might win, but maybe it was okay for him to get his first loss early on here. Hard-fought battle. Now Trick thinks that Carmelo is innocent. So the plot thickens. Dan, dan, ha. Ah. Excuse me, I nearly needed a burp. Oh, and I hope you have hiccups. Thank you. I come up at 11.13. It's been a long day. I started work at 7 a.m. It's now 1.47 a.m. Well, Jesus Christ, it's nearing 24 hours of being awake. Anyway, Nikki, the Lions has a vignette that airs as well as a vignette for the family. ATA, you fucking doing Tom. You're going to eat that fucking cannoli? Uh, Cora Jade has an interview with Kelly Kincaid. Cora with a lot of sass at... God damn it, bro. God damn it. She's smoking hot. She's getting hotter and hotter as the weeks and months go by. She's just hot, dude. She's starting to grow up as a character as well. And the funny thing is that Kelly Kincaid didn't get a word in the whole time. Oh, dear. Mackenzie Mitchell got fired. Not fired, but released. Oh, God. I feel bad for her. She should still be there. She's a part of that family. She should never have been released. Her and Kelly couldn't co-host the duties you got enough money guys come on you can have two fucking announcers backstage for for nxt come on anyway we see trick oh carmelo an apology in the locker room trick was pumped that Melo won and Melo says for him to whoop that trick later it kind of doesn't make sense because his name's trick but anyway forget it uh nxt title number one contendership iron survivor challenge match for the man tyler bait die josh briggs bron breaker trick williams Obviously, the five-man qualified in the last few weeks. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry if I slur a little bit. I am a little bit tired, but slightly drunk. That's why I'm wearing my Christy Mac hat. <laughs> it's signed, too. I met her. Yeah. Uh, points, are scored by, points are scored by pinfall. You know all the shit. All right? Okay, we don't need to go through it. Anyway. It's always tough when there's a long match for both genders, right? The war games, the chamber, the rumble. Um, I had a hard time believing going into this so that the men would beat what the women did earlier. Dijak and Josh Briggs started off the proceedings here. It was a bit of a stalemate between the two big best dudes. Uh, Dijak with a sit-down choke slam and Josh kicked out. You know what? That's a finisher, dude. His other fin his actual finish is pretty good, but the sit-down choke slam is pretty darn bro. Uh, bro, sorry. Sorry, I am tired. Uh, Dijak got a pin at the five-minute mark to get his first point. Tyler Bate is out next, and I hate him. You know why I hate him? Because he ended Darba Kato's career. So fuck you. Oh, the big strong boy. Shut up. A big close-up from Briggs to pin Dijak at some point here. Briggs got his first point. Uh, Dijak interrupted a, ty sorry, a Tyler driver 97. Uh, but was sent back into the penalty box after a roll-up pin. <laughs> it's funny. He just finally got out of the penalty box and he got pinned. I was like, oh, God, another 90 seconds. Can't. Trick Williams was in next and the fans are into it. Whoop that trick. 
whoop that trick. All these white people, like they're just terrible, bro. Uh, that was supremely Brian trick. Tyler Bates spinned trick right round, baby, right round like a record baby, uh, and slammed him for a two count. Tyler Bates got another pin to be in the lead here. Uh, Bron Breaker was in last, and here we fucking go, bro. Bron Breaker comes in, spears Briggs immediately, gets a pin. Then he spears Tyler Bate, gets a pin. Diajack jumps off the top rope, gets speared in midair by Bron Breaker, and he gets pinned. And now Bron Breaker, within the space of 30 seconds, is in the fucking lead. <laughs> um, honestly, I've never seen anyone move as quick as Bron Breaker. The explosiveness from him is insane. He locked in a Steiner recliner, excuse me, on Trick, who got to the ropes. Trick hit a crossbody to the outside on a group of people. Dijak boot Trick to get his second point. Bate caught a Frankensteiner into a Tyler Driver 97 for his third fall. That was crazy. He fucking Frankensteinered someone, and on the way down, Tyler Bate hit that sit-down Tyler Driver. Shades of chronic, 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 dent, 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 dent. Uh, Dijak and Briggs hitting a double choke slam on Bate. Notice how I... I went with Chronic and not the Brothers of Destruction. What a WCW nerd. Uh, they hit a double moonsault. Unfortunately, Briggs overshot his, but they both got another point. Briggs, like Lash Legend, maximizes minutes. That's for us here. Uh, that Josh Briggs, that son of a bitch, he uh, maximizes minutes like uh, that motherfucking Lash Legend. Why would Jim Ross say motherfucker? <laughs> I'm tired. Ron put Trick through a barricade. Who still has zero points? Then Bron got choke slammed through the announce table. Trick pins Briggs for his first point. Then Dijak nails Trick and Eddie Thorpe then stopped the referee from counting that little fuck. So now we've got Dijak and Eddie Thorpe's feud continuing. Fucking hell. Thought it was over. Trick rolled Dijak up for his second point and then he reversed a Tyler driver on Bate and got his third point. And then he hit a big knee on Bron Breaker who charged into the ring after going through that announce table. Trick Williams got his fourth point in the dying seconds and the fans went fucking banana. 25 minutes, Trick Williams. He goes to New Year's Evil to challenge the champion. Rey Mysterio backstage presenting the North American Championship to book, sorry, blah, 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 fuck, to Dragon Lee. Congratulations, Dragon. Uh, Josh Briggs was upset backstage as book. Brooks Jensen and Fallon were trying to wish him some congratulations despite losing. You know, Fallon also lost her plight, her opportunity in the women's version of the Iron Survivor Challenge. Then Metaphor end up talking smack to them because they're pissed off because... Um, why, why were they pissed off? Oh, Lash Legend didn't win, yeah. <laughs> and then they all start fighting. So, yeah, Alpha Academy are definitely going back to the main roster. And now metaphor are busy with uh brooks uh jensen and josh briggs and fallon henley thank god man because you know what that trio have needed a angle for a while they haven't done anything since that stupid love storyline that they did where they were barely even competing and it was funny it was funny trust me and they were nxt uk tag team champions as well but you know um they haven't done anything of note since uh, that whole angle blew off. Anyway, big uh, entrance video for Kiana James. Here comes a steel cage match. Roxanne Perez, Kiana James, second last match on this PLE. Uh, they've been at each other's throats for months now. And honestly, it's just a cut and paste job of all of Roxanne's views. Roxanne gets into a tiff with somebody. Then she's constantly fighting with them and attacking them backstage or in public like some unhinged mental person. Uh, and it's really made Roxanne come across like a psycho. Okay, that's two. Uh, three is usually Roxanne ends up getting the the, the final win of the feud. Sick of these these potato soup baby faces. You can make her as psychopathic as as you want, mate, but I'm still not buying it. Kiana is just a stuck up cow, and she's great with the character, and I dig her style. I think this is the feud ending match, but because of the finish, I don't think so. I think that. It's going to end up with some sort of tag team bullshit. Anyway, Kiana goes after Roxanne with her handbag at the beginning, beginning. And who would have thought six months ago, Kiana would be in a cage match. Good for you, love. Uh, talk about up in the ante on this PLE. Uh, I thought if Kiana loses, I riot. She needed it. She needed this. 
Uh, Roxanne has won like three of her last four feuds or, or, you know, she beat Cora Jade, she beat Blair Davenport. There's been others. I just can't remember right now. It's late. <laughs> so I'm here from Kiana, but damn, a women's cage match can be hard because the ladies are so small, so the impact hitting into the side of the cage isn't as strong. Roxanne's plight also makes it um, makes me have a hard time getting into the suspense being built off her being a baby face because I think she's unlikable because she acts like a fucking psycho. Roxanne climbs to the top of the cage, even though escaping the cage doesn't get you her win. And it didn't even it didn't even end with a big spot anyway. It was a bit of a disappointment. Honestly, oh man, I hate saying this, but this is a bit of a dud of a cage match, to be honest. I just don't think these two were suited to be in a cage match. I think maybe they would have been suited more to being in a street fight. Um, I just don't think cage matches really worked. Like a cage match would work if it's like Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, I think. I don't think Kiana and Roxanne were suited to this. I think Roxanne is too small. Um, Kiana's kind of small in a way too, because just the impact of them hitting against the cage doesn't hurt or have an impact on the eyesight that makes it think, whoa. Um, it's just, I don't know why. It just, it just didn't click for me. I think they would have done better with it being no holds barred or street fight or whatever. Um, anyway, the finish was Kiana bringing a chair in after being almost knocked out. Um, Roxanne looked like to, she was going to win though. Then Izzy Dane of all people, I've only seen her on level up. And when she was in the, uh, women's breakout tournament, she got involved to help Kiana, uh, win. She, we'd seen on the last episode of NXT, but she hasn't really been introduced properly. She hasn't, she really hasn't. Um, no vignettes or anything like at least uh, what's it Carmen Petrovich has had some vignettes Izzy has had nothing she's a former volleyball player she's very impressive looking she's very tall um, she slammed the, the cage door into Roxanne's face um, but the crowd weren't reacting because I don't think they knew who she was they couldn't tell it took me a few seconds to figure out who it was and I'm like oh it's Izzy Dane like okay but I think the finish was flat because nobody really knew who she was. So that's the thing. When you introduce new characters, we need vignettes. We need to get to know them beforehand. Anyway, Keanu James wins in 11 minutes, 27 seconds. I feel bad because that match could have been better. It's hard to follow the men's fucking Iron Survivor thing. Anyway, main event time here. Ilya Dragunov taking on Baron Corbin for the NXT Championship. Baron had been alluding to wanting a title shot for some time. Eventually attacked Ilya Dragunov after Halloween Havoc, I believe, um, in one of his more recent title defenses. Since then, Baron's been trying to get in Ilya's head. Um, Ilya made it seem so that he was in his head. But then at the last episode of NXT, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> Uh, Ilya was playing possum and the whole time he was pretending that he was very upset about this whole situation but in fact he was not he was fine and now he's in Baron's head brilliant so this is Baron's big test to face off against this one-of-a-kind performer they change a start off half the crowd were actually behind Baron which was crazy for me to imagine because most wrestling fans seem to hate him um, unfairly as well it's like QT, he's like the QT Marshall of WWE almost. Uh, Baron takes charge early by front suplexing Ilya onto the announce table and Ilya's ribs were going to be the issue going forward in this match, the psychology. Baron just kept on Ilya like fat on an American. But uh, Baron is in charge and he hugged Ilya at one stage um, and hit a urinagi. Baron was just dominating. Uh, but then Dragunov got in charge, hit a senton off the top rope, but it hurt his ribs, mate. Deep six from Corbin, which would hurt the ribs. Anybody thinking, um, anyone, anybody thinking that that was going to be the end of the match was is crazy. Thinking that it was the end of the match is crazy. It was crazy. Damn it. Poor Norman. Hopefully Norman can fix that because he's going to realprowrestling.com for this review. Uh, <clears throat> huge power from Ilya. He went coast to coast. He reversed the end of days into a DDT. He hit three H-bombs. Then he hugged Baron and he hit the Torpedo Moscow and Ilya won decisively. 
after the match, Trick Williams came out to taunt Ilya as they will battle at New Year's Evil. The feud is over. Trick is the next challenger for Ilya at New Year's Evil. And I bet you anything, it builds towards Miller and Trick breaking up even further as we head to Standard Deliver 2024. Ilya dragging off in 20 minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, the match was good. Uh, I was a little distracted. Um, and I don't know why. It's because I've I've been awake so long that I, I'm having a hard time concentrating. But it was good for what I saw. Um, and I did see most of it, all of it pretty much. But I just, when you've been watching wrestling for this long, I, I started watching this fucking thing at like 8.30. And I finished watching it at 1am. Because I was just I had to keep pausing it because I've been watching so much wrestling lately that it just it starts to burn you out. You need to pause it after every match and just take a break. This is the way it is, you know, because um, I'm not only just, you know, writing notes for a review, a video review, but I'm writing notes in perfect form to be on the website, which is www.realprowrestling.com. So it's just it's just tiring, you know, but it is what it is. Um I really enjoyed the show. Uh, it's not their best PLE. It was pretty close to being, you know, one of their best. But um, uh, I think that cage match really hurt things. Uh, I don't know if it was agented properly. Um, I mean, I, I can't really talk like that because I don't fucking know what it's like behind the scenes. But what were, for whatever reason, Roxanne and uh, Kiana did not... Uh, have chemistry in a match that was a cage match. It was probably their first cage match that either of them have ever had. So I just think maybe that they would have been more suited to, um, yeah, again, a street fight, no holds barred, um, the implementation of the different weapons and all that might have made for a more interesting affair as opposed to being surrounded by a cage, which, I mean, I know cage is a feud ender, but at the same time, cage match is usually set up because we're trying to keep people from interfering in the match. Um, and it didn't matter in the end because Izzy Dane was able to fucking interfere despite the fact it was a cage match. Anyway, does it matter? Look, hey, I'm loving NXT at the moment. They're probably, it's probably my favorite product that's going right now in pro wrestling. Um, thank you for checking out the show here. I'm California. This is my Christy Mac hat. Uh, <laughs> And guess what? <clears throat> we'll see you down the road. Thank you. All of that has been paid for by the WZWA Network.